Hello everyone, this is Marlene from M. Lopez Bath and Body Creations. Finally coming back to you with another video. It's been a while. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Marlene Lopez, owner and maker of M. Lopez Bath and Body Creations. I make um, soap, hand soaps, body lotions, candles, wax melts, and tons of little scrumptious little uh, bath and body treats. And um, today we're making candles, or we're actually going to be testing some candles. So, uh, huh, it's been a while. Anyways, I've been away for a while because I, and for those of you who do know me personally, I am a full-time college student, and that's not easy at my age. Um, I also have a part-time job as a home health care uh, taker, and I'm coming to you from my kitchen this time around because... Well, my room has become a complete uh, and utter mess full of boxes and baubles and packaging and supplies galore. So I'm in my kitchen and not for too much longer because I'm being kicked out of my kitchen by my mother and moving into a storage unit in the backyard. So yay! Thank you, Mom and Dad. Um, now, this is what pays the bills, this is what pays for my college, and, um, I was selling over the summer at little pop-up shops, and that was going great. That was going awesome. And I had a car accident, and now I'm not able to make it all the way out there. So, um, I decided to ramp up the videos and share with you what it is that I do, how I do it, and my little tips on how I do it to save money. Now, anybody that makes candles knows, oh, anybody who makes anything knows, that testing, research, and development is what's going to cost you. And it definitely costs you here. Or it definitely costs me here. So, I recycle my glasses. I use my wick clips over again since these are the, I use these for my wooden wicks. That's what we're testing today and uh, the different fragrances. Now, instead of pouring full candles, which is up to here, I'll end up pulling, uh, pouring a half candle. So I know that the wick size that I use is burning correctly halfway down. It's not over wicked. I know that's working out great with that fragrance oil, then I'll go ahead and pour a full one. If it, by this time it's uh, overworked, the glass is too hot, the flame is too high, I can pull out that wick and still insert another one, which is pretty easy with these wicks because even if I've got to go in there and yank it out, it does come right out. And I can follow the same little hole back in there, shove it right back in, and shove a new one, uh, a different size back into there. I do that once it's solidified so you can see it a lot easier. Uh, let's see. Cannot find my heat, my uh, my little temperature thermometer thing. My little gun one. God, you guys know what it's called. It's not coming to mind at this moment, but um, can't find it because, like I said, that room has become a total disaster area, and I'm not going to step over boxes and go through things just to look for it, so I got myself a little cheap thermometer. Anyway, the wax I'm using today is 60... Hmm. 60.46, I believe it's called, and it is a paraffin and coconut soy blend. Soy, excuse me. Paraffin and coconut blend. I love that it has coconut in it because it still has that, that natural coconut feel to it. And it's nice and soft. It's a great container wax. Let's see. I work with different waxes is why I have a hard time keeping everything straight in my head with school and work and everything. I mean, who wouldn't have have a tough time keeping that straight in their head? Anyway, I believe it's 6046. It is a... 
yes, it is my it is my paraffin. It is my paraffin and coconut wax blend. I love it. I love it. It works great. It takes a good amount of burn good soil. Uh, it's a great hot throw. Cold throw is great also. Nice creamy white looking wax. Uh, takes color beautifully. And um, let's see. We're also using wooden wicks. So let's show you how that works. I'm going to be testing quite a few different containers. Well, fragrance oils, I should say. I've already baselined my um, containers and the wicks. So I pretty much know how they burn, how they're supposed to burn without fragrance oil. Now, even when you get them straight from the manufacturer, I always clean the bottoms regardless. These are used. I recycle them when I test them, but um, at the same time, still got to clean the bottoms because they, they always come with a little bit of residue, oily residue, from, you know, straight from the manufacturer. That's just so they don't have any problems. No biggie. Clean off some of the other wax residue from the last batch that I tested. Make sure that bottom is clean. And I'm also testing this huge jar here. This is going to contain a nice candy, pepperminty, cranberry fragrance. I'm actually going to test two different fragrance oils in, in that size container, actually in that container. Not the same container at the same time, just two different fragrance oils. We're going to try Peppermint Candy from Crafter's Choice, which I bought at Full Sale Supplies Plus, and Spiced Cranberry at a later time. Also from Crafter's Choice from Full Sale Supplies Plus. So I thought I'd just kind of take you through the process of what it is I do and how I do it. So, wick clip, wooden wick. These are wick stickers. Center of them as best you can. Stick it to the bottom. Eyeball it that it's centered and then push on the bottom. I've already written on these, but that's actually an old test that I did, so it's not going to be that same fragrance oil that I'm putting in there. These are great because even if you don't have them completely centered there, they give you a lot of leeway to fix that. And I've got my wax in a double boiler system. I have a Presto pot, but um, again, I'm just testing, so I don't have that filled with this wax. I believe I still have it filled with my old wax that I was using. I was not crazy about, but I still use it. And it depends on the customer and the, not just the customer, but the, um, gosh, what is it? Container I use also. Actually, this, is a, this was originally a 5-inch wick, and I cut it in half, and I forgot out of the 5-inch wicks, I can actually cut it down to 3, I can cut into 3 wicks to test, you know, when I test my jar of candles. So, I kind of goofed on that, but it's a much larger wick than what I really wanted. That's okay. No harm. Really push those in there. This one I'm going to test all the way down since I've already baselined it and I kind of figure I know what I want. Now, in this same video, I'm not going to be able to show you what they look like, you know, solidified and, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to stay. You know, what they look like solidified and
when they look like when they're testing, we're in the middle of testing, but I will bring you back another time for that. Okay, now that we're back, you don't want to have to wait for this to blow. We're up at 196. Nope, it's dropping back down. I'll mix that a little bit. So 192. I'm going to go ahead and add the UV inhibitor. This here I'm making a habit out of. Keeps the white wax nice and white, keeps it from turning yellow, and keeps the colors vivid. I do color my candles, not all of them are colored. So I've got some of these coming in that are clear. And I will be coloring. Mm, my wax melts, I do color. I love color. Color is beautiful. Anyway, so that's almost ready. We're downright ready. So let's see. What shall we test first? I want to test Nag Chakra. Definitely want to test Nag Chakra. about it but I do actually like that one above all other all others that I've tested all other nog chompers and here that's pretty popular so I'm at 195 right now what I'm going to do is I'm back oh there it is one from the dollar store because I destroyed my old one. A lot bit too much. So I'm going to pour a little bit of that. Just a little bit, bit too much. Perfect. Like. It's actually going to cool down pretty quickly, so I am going to go ahead and pour my fragrance oil. Now, these containers, I bought them to order, I don't know what they're called, they're an anchor container, and I actually picked them up at Target, or online at Target, while this whole pandemic thing was going on, and I just started using them as I started making candles again, because it's been a while, and I love them, I picked up a bunch of them. I have to stir for a little while, and I... Not a big fan of stirring forever. I have no idea what I just dropped. I'll figure it out. Well, 
That is nice. So let's try this. I don't like to waste any, but I always allow for wastage. So sometimes I, well, most of the times I add an, an extra gram or two in the total wax weight. And maybe just a smidgen of the fragrance oil, depending on the batch size that I'm creating. So for this one, this one is spot on. But, um, I scrape out of everything as much as I possibly can. And while that is warm, the wax is warm, clean off my spatulas. And these little spatulas I bought at the Dollar Tree. Jugs from Dollar Tree also. Now this I'm gonna put over here. Like that. And we're gonna try this again. Oh, that's what I dropped. Yes, and there's a lot of things from the Dollar Tree. As much as possible. Let's see. And I wipe down the bottom every time because when I pour, I don't want there to be any water mixing with my wax. So again, I am going to about 89 grams. That one out. Okay, this one and another one, so make sure there's no dust in any of them. Now, just so you know, these also came with lids. These are pretty cool. They come in ounces. Mills and cups. And the three little porch bells, which I thought was cool. Okay, so back to grams, tear it out. I'm going to want to test. I've got spiced cranberry already. Nine grams of spiced cranberry. like tart cranberry. A little bit of clove. I'll just stir that a bit. No air bubbles. Oh, well, that kind of defeated the purpose, didn't it? Now, 
and this solidifies. I'm going to trim down the wick. Some more wick trimmers. I'm going to start carrying wick trimmers soon so you can buy them online. But um, you can just as easily use a pair of scissors. Well, once it gets set deep, you really can't use scissors. You need to use a pair of wood trimmers. Or, if you've got a nice, good pair of nail clippers, you can use that. Say goodbye to using them person, for uh, personal use, huh? But, they work just fine. Okay, I made a bit of a mess on that candle, but that candle is ready to be solidified and tested. Yes, I did go through a bunch of paper towels. They go in a waste bin. And sometimes I turn them into fire starters. Depending on the pile that I end up with, it might be a bit too much, but since I do light a few fires here and there in the backyard, I do use them. It's really not a complete waste. process. I know how many candles I'm going to test, so I weigh out the amount of wax that I want to use. And with that, I go ahead and melt it down and get started. Where I'm at like that before I put it back in there. Let it sit there for a little bit. Move my pen on. Zero out my scale. You know what? I'm going to want to test out a different one. Cuban tobacco. This is nice and sweet. I've been doing this for a little while, so I kind of know more or less what my temperatures are, especially when I'm using such little wax. And then I'm also putting it on top of a granite countertop, so... And you know it kind of sucks in the heat. Sometimes a bit too quickly. So those temperatures are pretty low. My water, I don't have it at a boil right now. It's at a simmer. It's on the lowest setting possible. And that Cuban tobacco is very sweet. With all my candles, I write down what wax I'm using, what wick I'm testing, how many drops or what colors I use, how much fragrance oil I use, normally what temperature I pour at, but I'm pretty consistent with my process, so I follow that down to the letter. So I don't generally write that down anymore. But, let's see, with the bigger batches, I take a little bit more care and make sure that I'm 
everything's mixed properly that I'm paying more attention because uh, last time I made a bunch of wax melts or at least one set of wax melts with no fragrance oil. I guess it does happen. I had to correct that. <laughs> it was not, it was not pretty. My temperature has dropped a bit too much for my life in here. But it's quickly rising again. So... I'm going to give it a quick wipe down with a little Clorox wipe. Clean out that fragrance oil from my jar. And let's get another fragrance oil measured out. Got one more small one. What should I do? What the heck, let's go try. Let's go ahead and try Arabian Nights or Arabian Musk. I like these little pull spots, make things a whole less, a lot less messy. So we've got five ready. It's ready and we're over half. And then six. I hope I'm not mumbling, everybody can hear me. scale again. Go little guy, go. Go little guy, go. And it turned off on me, so now I gotta start all over again. Well, 170, 175 is usually where I like to add the fragrance oil. It's at 175. There's my fragrance oil. I generally like to make my candles to order, but with my busy schedule, I've been making sure that I had at least a few in stock, or I should say on hand. Clean out some of that excess oil. Mix a little bit. I like to keep a few um, in stock, that way I have it on hand so I can just go ahead and wrap it and ship it. Or uh, what I was doing is, you know, taking as many as I can to my um, pop-up shops, and I was selling pretty well. And just as I started making the candles, I um, had my car accident, so I wasn't able to take them back. The holidays hit, and now here I am making, making and testing, making and testing. I didn't get to sell any of my wax products at my little pop-up shops because it was hot, it was outdoors because of the pandemic, and I was afraid my stuff was not going to survive. Pretty afraid. Now 
Now, normally when I make my candles, I don't pour them out on my countertop just like this. What I do is I keep them in their box, their shipping box, the one that they came, everything came in, or the, the vessels that they came in. And um, I pour them in there. I close up the box and I let them solidify slowly. As slowly as possible, whatever works. That way I have less dips. And less use of the heat gun. Poke a hole in them. Right in the middle, right next to the um, wick. And see if there's any sinkholes that are not visible. If there is, you know, I hit it with the heat gun. If there isn't, I hit it with the heat gun anyway because I just poked a hole in it. <laughs> but um, that's how I ensure that I don't have too many problems with whether I should say that uh, none of my customers have problems with candles because those sinkholes, when they sneak up on you, you tend to get a, a candle that tunnels. And that's going to cause problems for your candles. I'm just cleaning out my little glass containers. Or I should say my glass measuring containers. Because my next one is going to be the Evoca. A little jar, a huge jar. That's actually the biggest jar I sell. Let me see where I'm at with this. Start that over again. And if my wax measurements were spot on and my pouring is spot on, I will go ahead and measure out the fragrance oil. Mm, this one, we're going to test peppermint candy. That will be... Oh, wow, did I not write down? I know I did. Go ahead and read the book. Whew. Have my little red book with all my Yes, you know, recipes. Wow, that is a lot of fragrance oil. Well, at least now you know why I have such a good hot throw. the maximum amount of fragrance oil possible or allowed in that wax. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I'm back to the drawing board on how much I should use. I don't spend a lot of money on equipment, so I save wherever possible. 99 cent store little pot thingies, 99 cent store rags, 99 cent store, you know, little cups, and I splurge where I need to with my good scales, good fragrance oils, you know, good materials, or raw materials, I should say. That way what I'm giving you is quality. Letting that heat up again. I know this is a large, oh, excuse me, a long video, but I figured I'd take you through my testing process. That way you know how much time and effort your candle makers put in. You know why these things, these things can cost so much. It's not cheap to be able to make candles wherever I can save I do like these two pots that I use as double boilers I actually got them at the casino the little free gifts that you get
get um, every month for when you when you gamble. And um, I go there on occasion, but I always make sure that I get my free gifts. So I got my little set of pots, and that's what I'm using. They're free, and they're good quality. Let's see, ninety. Looks like I My watch between 190 and 200, so I make sure that as long as within it's in the, it's within those ranges, I'm good to go. I need. Let's see. Let's see. Make sure. Oops, air bubbles. Three sixty one. Now, all this is oh, a warm. This pouring pitcher is warm and pretty damn hot. I'm going to go ahead and dry out, clean it out, nice and clean. So, turn that off because I don't need the steam. Let's see, put this down. I don't want to spill that by accident. So where I'm at with that temperature. I guess the video size had been reached, so it stopped. My phone stopped. I'm recording on my phone. I don't have any fancy video equipment. I don't even know how to edit this, so this is going to be some trial and error. In the meantime, I'm using my little thermometer to test the temperature. And stir. And it drops down a few more degrees. I'll go ahead and pour the fragrance oil. Mm, peppermint candy. Gotta get on this nice huge jar. In a day or two, I'm hoping to bring you back to show you my jars, my uh, candles, my test candles as they've solidified. And bring you back for the actual burn test. As I said before, I did my base testing so I know my wax, my wick, and my jar all go together perfect and now I'm testing the fragrance oil and since it's uncolored that's one less test I have to do. Soak up the excess oil. And this is a rather large candle on its own so I'm going to go ahead and take my time and make sure that's mixed well. I don't want any pockets of oil because that Ooh, can actually ignite. I'm going to test this whole jar to fill that one up. Because since the vessel has different sizes to it, you know, the opening is one size, the middle bulges out a little bit more, and the bottom tapers down. I don't know if you can see that. Tapers down, see? That's gonna have some, that's gonna pose some challenges for my wicks. And my wick does not want to stand still. Does not want to stay in the middle. It's making me regret cutting it. That's okay. I'll figure it out. This larger candle is going to be more prone to sinkholes, so I want to make sure that I've got that pour temperature correct. And when it does solidify, I'm still going to test it for sinkholes, so I'm going to go ahead and poke a hole through it. Let's 
next to the wick and see where we're at with that. Get it with the heat gun and make sure that it's a good candle. That way I can measure its performance with the with the wax, excuse me, with the uh, new fragrance oil. That looks about right. So let's go ahead and start pouring. No air bubbles. That's good. Now I did learn a couple of tricks online. Or I should say on YouTube. I don't like plastic jug is hot. Wow. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I did learn a few tricks on YouTube. Watching Jeff Stanley and Wade Thomas from Black Tie Barn. Uh, Wade Thomas is from Black Tie Barn, and Jeff Stanley is from Stanley Handcraft. You can find them both on YouTube. And um. You know, pouring all the way to the top of my wick. My wax shrinks a tad bit, and since I know how much it shrinks, I go ahead and pour my wax almost all the way to the top of the to the top of the wick. If not to the top to the lower the wick, and it'll shrink down from there. That way, I don't have to trim the wick. Um, I learned that one from Wade Thomas. Tom, Wade Thompson. Wade from Black Tie Barn. <laughs> I really need to remember these names. Give these people the respect they deserve. Anyways, so that's how I generally pour my candles. Now, um, save well, actually a lot of time and energy on my part. And um, a lot of headache. Later on, too, with putting your wicks, your wick nipper in there, and gouging your gouging the top of your of your candle. Hate that because then I have to hit it with a heat gun all over again. My wick is like not wanting to stay put. This is hot. I really don't want to move it now. I mean that's horrible because I need to make wax melts next. <sighs> That's okay. That can live there for a while. Anyways, I hope this has been entertaining for you. You can see how this all plays out, and I will come back to you with another video. Bye.